get started here. Okay. Okay. It's November 23rd, 2020. This is the Policy and Procedure Committee meeting. Call the roll, please. Here. Here. All. Here. All. All. Here. Stickner. Here. Sir. Yep. And motion, you have a, a copy of the agenda in front of you. There are motion to approve. This is awful. Second by Mr. Stickner. Are there any questions or comments regarding the agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Public comment. <clears throat> Is there any public here this morning? No committee chair reports. Mr. Barron, Management Committee and Judicial. Uh, management for uh, open fertilizer bid. And he talked about assessment of the property. Uh, judicial, just normal reports. Okay, Mrs. Alpha, Health Committee. Well, we'll be having the regular report along with the uh, budget. Okay, Mr. Stickton, our Tax Committee. We'll be having the regular department head reports, and we would not necessarily meet, but the committee will have to get the uh, uh, what do you call it? The show? A levy. A levy. Uh, a levy will have to be completed. Okay, Mr. Old, I would. Uh, we have two re resolutions. Bill of Water Salary Resolution and the General Maintenance <coughs> Resolution and the claims. Okay. I think Thank we'd you. like to have the meeting here again. I did sing the Asheville, but. Uh, <coughs> I think until further notice, that's what we would. <laughs> okay, Mr. EMA, we're ready for you, sir. Short report, everything's COVID. Good to uh, see you standing on your feet. Everything's COVID lately. Uh, as you know, we've had a strong surge um, for EMA. What that means is we've had a number of additional resource requests. We still have a stockpile that we're helping other healthcare entities and uh, emergency responders remain supply. Um, in addition, we worked on uh, an after action report and improvement plan, submitted that to the state. We have some revisions to make um, concerning COVID operations up till now in Iroquois County. So that's what EMA has been doing. Uh, a couple small things, one of them being, well, we had a Starcom radio installed in our office um, a few months ago and I was pretty happy about it. We finally got a test to put it through, got a ch chance to put it through a hard test and uh, found a couple problems, which is in the long term good, so we could find the problems and be able to fix them. Um, it did partially work, partially not work, but that's something that happened. Uh, besides that, that's what EMA has been up to. And moving forward, um, EMA is going to be working on a number of things, including continuing operations for COVID. Um, working on trying to get some reimbursements for the county for COVID operations and start working on our EOP revision, thyra, so on and so forth, due in January. That's what I got. Okay, anybody have any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is a discussion of the current grant funds for the county government. We have a grant in the amount of $443,000, some change. And Bill is the person that's the administrator of the grant, I guess you'd say. Right now, <clears throat> I know that the, uh, there's an application or for the grant on the county recorder that we'll be discussing at the board meeting here. And, 55 minutes, but I wanted to go over any others that have applied or any other, you know, what, what, what's your status on this? Um, as of now, uh, 
we have not submitted anything towards the reimbursement of uh, using the four hundred forty three thousand eight hundred forty one dollars. Uh, I do have a few things we could submit uh, as far as payroll goes, uh, but just as of now, anybody that thinks that they could utilize anything for any department, they can submit invoices to me and I can go ahead and submit them online. And that everything has to be submitted by December 31st, is that correct? They're recommending that it is by December 31st. Um, they do have an extension date of uh, January 31st if, if we need to, I can file for that extension. Brian, do you have any other things that you can use besides what you're already talking about? Well, I haven't really um, put too terribly much thought into it. Um, uh, I did mention to you uh, that possible laptops, if we have any employees that are quarantined at home, they would be able to access everything online um, through uh, what is the name of what we use? Netwatch. Oh, um, remote access Netwatch. Yeah, yeah. So they would be able to remote access their uh, computers at work and print any documents and do anything for anyone that's in the office. Um, so that is a possibility. We uh, were able to get three through the CARES grants for election purposes, um, but the recording office is my my biggest concern because that is an office that cannot be shut down. Um, so if it does happen where everyone has to go into quarantine in our office, even if someone's not sick, it would be something that myself and Cheryl would be able to still record documents. We just have to figure out how to get the documents to us. <laughs> but. <clears throat> The meeting that we're going to have after this, the amount of money that you're looking for is going to take care of everything as far as what needs to be done with those records? Oh, no, that's taking care of 10 years worth of records. Right, well, that's what I'm um, driving right. at. Is there more that can be done that we, that we could put in on this grant? Not to be able to get an agreement with Vidler and that sort of thing before the uh, timeline is up. So, um, as far as their, which I was going to report this in the next meeting, there are several counties that have applied for this grant. Um, I do know one, uh, Kankakee, was denied the grant. So it it's all a possibility. It's not even a 100% guarantee. So um, this is just to try and move forward a little bit and um, being a little conservative because the amount of years that we have online right now, which uh, there's access to approximately 30 years worth of recorded documents, uh, 40 years is a standard search. So to have an additional 10 years online would be beneficial. Um, but right now, uh, all I have is the 10 year. Uh, I guess you know. I guess one of the things that the reason for this discussion is to see if we can search and exhaust every opportunity for the county here, since it appears we're going to have a pretty big gap between what you're asking for with this Fiddler grant and, and what, the, what the total amount of the grant is. Right, I agree with that. Um, I guess the reason of being conservative is that um, another county has been shot down for it. So trying to be more aggressive, I feel like trying to get 20, 30 years worth of documents scanned and put online, um, I feel like that's gonna be a trigger to be like, no, you're just trying to get your documents online where this is doing the 10 years is going to be able to have a 40 year search done and that's the that's the key i guess is where people are looking for documents is within the last 40 years more than likely do you think do you think there's a good chance to apply for these laptops would, would be something that would be approved i would think that that would be something that would be approved 
that, that's something that could be widespread throughout all the departments here. Probably, yeah. But I mean, uh, it's all in the narrative that is written when the grant is applied for, um, basically. So it's all in how persuasive we are. <laughs> You know, I think we need to try and get some communication out to the other departments and try and get some that. Right. Unfortunately, I feel like the it, I feel like we're a day late and a dollar short. And I guess the reason why I'm saying that is because this is all due by the end of this month. And had finance had the opportunity to start figuring out where money was going to come from, and that's my biggest concern. Is, Figuring out where money is coming from. Obviously, I'm not part of. I, I take care of my budget. That's it. You know. So Every, everything that we apply for on this grant has to be paid up front. It does. Yeah. That's that is a concern that yeah. we have also. But... <laughs> Stacy. Concerning the CURE grant, one option that we have is um, PPE, or personal protective equipment. Um, during the beginning of this pandemic, the state shipped EMA a lot of PPE and our jobs to then disperse it. And we're starting to run low on select items. We can submit for more from the state, but they're not going to give us more until we show that we have tried to acquire some for ourselves. Um, this grant is 100% reimbursable, we could use it to buy PPE, which would then be redistributed as needed to emergency responders and healthcare facilities in Iroquois County. And Just an idea. would be separate and apart from what the health department is doing? The health department and EMA have both received shipments, and they're both being used for the same thing. Right, but the health department has their own cure grant. Correct. Health so department has their own cure grant. How much? How much do you think what you're talking about would, would be in dollars and cents? I haven't started doing any pricing, but I would think after we took care of other necessities that other department has may come up with, that we could probably use a remainder to purchase what we may need. I know that we're running low on gloves, um, gowns, and some other things, which medical facilities are having a hard time getting their hands on. What Brian is talking about would leave us with about three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So you're saying you're going to spend that much on PPE? I'm saying it's an idea for you guys to toss up and uh, consider, because I understand also you have to pay for it up front, and I don't know what the county's ability to do that is or not. Right. That may be something we can talk some more about at the board meeting here later on this morning. But more information we can get about this, the better we can make the decision. There's another grant available to the county, FEMA uh, Public Assistance, and I've talked about this before. Um, that is not going to expire December 31st, and is 75% matching. So there's a number of things that I was going to apply for that grant first, um, but the state's guidance on that has changed, and they're recommending that we use CURE first. Um, and Ms. Johnson and I went over that number of months ago, and I wasn't able to proceed with any of that. So we have a few things, but <coughs> I wouldn't say any more than 10,000, would you, Ms. Johnson? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's I guess, I guess somehow between, and she's indicated she can apply for an extension until January 31st, so maybe we can make some decisions and further discussion at the board meeting this morning, but maybe we need to think about other things besides what, you know, the, the board meeting this morning is to take care of what, what Brian has. I understand Beyond that. that, maybe we need to, we need to aggressively pursue this thing so that by the time we have the board meeting on the 15th of December, we can determine what we want to do, assuming that would give enough time to apply for an extension to January 31st. 
Does that sound like a reasonable approach? Yes. Yes. I'm just putting it in your head so you know about it. Putting the ideas in your head. I think that's something that we all need to understand. I think you said that we have to pay for this up front. So we need to have some assurance that the grant is going to come through for it. Yes. Which is kind of why I'm suggesting PPE. Um, the purchase of PPE and payroll are probably the two top things that are going into Cures Grant. Um, payroll is uh, as long as the individual that one is requesting reimbursement for has been mostly dedicated to COVID-19 operations. That's that's how a lot of people are putting in for payroll. And PPE is an obvious usage. Uh, plexiglass to protect workers is another obvious usage, but. Those are the those are the common things that are being used in peer grants. All of your expenses along those lines is covered by another grant, aren't they, Brian? Uh, what do you mean? Your your extra costs for from the elections and so forth for the, the COVID restrictions. Yeah, all election related uh, expenses that we had to incur for COVID was was covered by the CARES grant that we received through the election. Which is a different grant than the CARES grant. Yes. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the two words are somewhat similar. Right. The way it was described to me, cares is the parent, cures is the baby. Correct. <laughs> and we approximately have eight different grants out there, um, which is where we have to be careful uh, with the cures grant not to try to double dip. Uh, the health department, of course, has the majority of them, and they also have the cures uh, grant, I believe, for 77000 and some change. Um, and then, of course, as Brian stated, they have there are certain grants that they've already submitted for for elections. And then, in discussion with um, Eric Stacy, with the FEMA grants, if, if that's not going to be submitted, I can you know I, I can get it together and try to submit it for the Cures grant. But we got to be careful not to. Okay. One question that I have: <clears throat> if we're talking about investigating or trying to get something put together for by December 15. What other departments in the county are do we anticipate having something that might apply? For example, has the highway department got anything? Probably not. What about over at the courthouse? Where, where is the circuit clerk at with some of these things? Is she have any reason to be working have any of her people working from home from home i've not talked with the circuit clerk about this but and i cannot speak for her but i imagine that with the amount of employees she has and the amount of space she has um she could certainly benefit from common idea common ideas such as plexiglass usage and laptops for be, being able to work from home if someone is isolated or quarantined but I haven't talked with her about this. Is that something you'd want to do, Jill, or contact all those people and yeah, I go over that. this with them and see <clears throat> what, what areas they might be able to have something that, that we could apply for? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to go over on this? Everybody understands what we're trying to do. The big thing is going to be that the board has to find anything that we're going to apply for. The board has to find the money to pay for it up front. As we get reimbursed. The thing, the thing about. The grant that we're going to be discussing at the board meeting at 10 o'clock is that even though we're agreeing to pay for it up front, the Federal isn't going to do anything until we get the grant gets a, a, approved by the state. So we're not really risking anything per se by doing that other than just tying up some money in the interim period. But the rest of these things, I'm not sure that that we're in that same situation. Uh, the 
this is something that the board is going to have to look at carefully as well as determining uh, you know the, the need for it and and if we have the money to put, pay for it up front okay yeah, everybody's good with that we'll go on to the next item on the agenda which is going into executive session so entertain a motion to do that this is also moved to an executive session. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. All same sign. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the executive session. 